Within the vast, information-rich community known as the World Wide Web lies many disturbing videos that have yet to be explained. One of the most popular examples of this is a clip known as Blank Room Soup, which has many theories surrounding it. And today, I'd like to see if we could uncover any new information regarding one of the internet's biggest mysteries. While the internet contains a plethora of disturbing imagery, it's doubtful that most shock material would be as impactful had it not been for an element of genuine harm or danger to it. Just look at the success of found footage films, whose affordable production costs seem to have inspired many in the online community. Some of the more popular examples of this include High Walter, which I covered in a previous video, as well as the subject of today, Freaky Soup Guy. For those who are unaware, Freaky Soup Guy is a minute-long video from 2005 of a man sitting at a table, eating soup, as two costume characters appear and confront him. The room is almost entirely white and the man appears to be sobbing near the end. The video was uploaded by a user under the name Renaissance Men, with a description that read, We don't know what this is. <laughs> A continuation of the scene was uploaded in 2006 by a user named Adana. Titled Soup Torture, it depicts the same two characters, this time from a distance, watching the man before running towards him and cutting out. The two videos remained relatively unnoticed for years, with the original still under 200,000 views despite widespread media coverage. This is because most who watched it originally simply dismissed it as some kind of art project or prank. In fact, looking at the comments, there was a near three-year gap before the story went viral. Interestingly enough, it would only become popular when it was re-uploaded in 2014 under the name blankroomsoup.avi. It's unknown why exactly the uploader did this, but clearly the name stuck. The description only reads, more like this on my channel, and they offer no further answers. And discussion about Blank Room Soup exploded a year later in 2015, with many popular YouTubers covering it, causing it to grow in popularity. And I don't know what this face is supposed to be. This is the first time I've seen it. It doesn't like link up to anything, you know, close to it. As far as close as I'm looking at it, it's like, you know, Betty Boop. And like, as soon as he starts crying, they like start nodding. Like if you just go up over here. <laughs> I think there's like a kissing noise here. There's like laughing and then this one dude's crying. He's like eating something. I don't know what this is. I found this off of the deep web and you know what? As pertinent to what I always do, um, I'm going to... I'm definitely going to have to forward this to an authority or something like that. All this talk has led many to theorize about its origins. As with anything vague and mysterious, many connected with the dark web and how it may actually show a kidnapping victim. Whether or not this is true is up for debate, but the three most prevalent rumors were as follows. Number one, the man in the video was kidnapped and held hostage for four to five days. What you see in the video was his last meal before he was brutally murdered. This would explain why he couldn't fight back against his captives. The second theory gets a lot more gruesome as well as simply absurd in my opinion, claiming that they kidnapped the victim and his wife, and then they murdered the wife and made him eat a soup out of her remains. The final rumor is pretty similar to the second one, except he's eating his own organs instead of his wife's, which I suppose is an improvement. To make things even more confusing, a YouTuber named Takedown Man also speculated that this was some sort of Chinese mafia execution tape. Some even go as far to say that there has been an unresurfaced beheading of the man. Claims of more footage existing have never been substantiated, however. With the surge of popularity, the YouTuber Rainbot started to investigate the mysterious clips and the individuals in them. She revealed that she was able to successfully contact the character's creator, who turned out to be Raymond Percy, the voice of the Flash from Zootopia. She did this by finding a mirror on Daily Motion by the account Ray Ray TV, which contained more clips of the costume characters doing performances. After this, she contacted Raymond and he gave his alleged backstory to the video. Apparently, while he was performing in his Ray Ray suit at the Sunset Club, someone broke into his vehicle and stole some of the extra costumes they had of the character. Long after, he received the now infamous video clips through his email, attached with no context or explanation. According to him, they behaved in a way that resembled the actual trained performers. 
leading him to speculate that the thieves had attended many of his shows to study. Although many chose to believe Raymond, that wasn't the case for everybody. Many have argued that there are reasons to believe the story Raymond told was fabricated as a publicity stunt. So what exactly is the truth? Well, we'll have to go further into the depths of the web to find out. One of the biggest red flags about Raymond's story was how he handled the situation from the start. To play the devil's advocate for just a second, if he received these disturbing, malicious videos with no reason to believe that they were fabricated, why wouldn't he have contacted authorities to help him get to the bottom of this? Couldn't these creepy videos be interpreted as some kind of threat? It seems like the way he went about handling the situation only led to more secrecy. In general, the way Percy framed the story makes it seem as if he had done it purposely to intrigue you to learn more. Hypothetically, in this situation, playing along with the public's perception of the events had more benefits than not. By encouraging these people to continue searching, they are inevitably learning more about the Ray Ray characters he created, in a way that will leave a lasting impression while he plays innocent. Through our research, we stumbled upon a Reddit thread where, believe it or not, Raymond's wife came out of the woodwork to discourage a poster from believing that the victim in the infamous video was portrayed by Raymond, for some odd reason. Definitely not Raymond eating the soup. You don't think so? I think I know I'm married to him. The plot thickens. If Squish Pink's being honest with us, that's very unsettling. It's been about 10 years since the last time we've done anything with Ray Ray. In the last year, we've gotten hundreds of emails from all over the world asking about the video. It's nuts. To call it unsettling is an understatement. This post was not particularly popular, but it does appear to be his wife, since the Squish Pink Reddit account had not made a post for five years, and then out of nowhere logged in to comment on this random thread. On top of that, Squish Pink is also the name of a YouTube account that uploaded numerous Ray Ray related videos going all the way back to 2007. As far as I can tell, no one else researching this mystery has even noticed that Raymond's wife had commented on this thread about the whole controversy. Despite the many playful performances of Ray Ray mentioned earlier, the creepy incarnations from Blank Room Soup are most definitely not out of character. There are videos of Ray Ray performing bottle fights. Since some of these early uploads show that they were trying to bank off of their uncanny appearance from the beginning, many have speculated that they use this as an opportunity of internet popularity to finally cement Ray Ray as some kind of disturbing icon. There have even been talks of there being audible laughter in the viral Blank Room Soup clip. Conclusion, there isn't and probably never will be definitive evidence if this was all just a publicity stunt that fell into Raymond's lap. On the other side of things, there probably will never be confirmation if these costumes were actually stolen out of his van. At this point, both sides of the coin are valid, and whether or not you believe Raymond's story, there's no denying that this is one of the strangest internet mysteries of current memory. So until next time, thank you for watching, and if you would excuse me, all this talk about soup has made me hungry.